Eh, oh, a bit wonky, aren't we? Oh, bear with, guys, sorry. All of a kerfuffle. I think, is that? Yeah, you can see more what's going on here. It all feels like a slightly different angle, though. Anyway, welcome those of you. You can see there's four of you online at the moment. Welcome to those four of you. And people are starting to fill in as well. Oh, I feel disorientated by that, but hopefully you guys are okay with that. I think it's just because we've got a slightly higher angle coming down. But anyway, who have we got online with us today? Hi, Fiona. Welcome. Hope you're well. Hi, Jackie. Thanks for joining. Oh, Rosie's online. Hi, Celia. Hi, Helen. Hi, Bridget. Hi, Kimberly. Oh, right. No, this is bugging me. I'm going to see what I can do about it. I'm going to faff around. Hello, Lorianne. Morning. If I go down there, you lose my head. Okay. Oh, Ooh, making a head, done, are we? Lovely. I need to just stop with this bit. I have been busy filming things, guys, this morning. Lots of things for um, Sew Over It and a few things for Lisa Come For Home. So the tripod's been kind of tweaked a bit and, yeah, sorry. So we are losing the top of my head, but never mind. Hi, guys. Well, I hope you're all feeling well um, and uh, are okay. I think just being okay at the moment is, uh, is what we can aim for. Hello. Oh, hi. Newbie June from York. Oh, hello. Well, do you know that I am from York? I grew up in a village in Sutton on the Forest, little village north of York. Um, so nice to know that someone from York there. Um, and we've also got someone here from v Virginia, California. Oh, and th thank you. Um, thank you for saying hi to everybody. So we are going to be doing a pipe cushion today, guys. But before we get into, into pipe cushionness, let's just have a little catch up, little chat. Um, firstly, I am wearing the Heather dress, um, which is one of my new favourite dresses to wear at the moment. Loving this. Feeling a bit glam today as well. Um, and um, uh, we have got lots of things going on on Sew Over It already. We have started the uh, year like every other year. Coco is now going to try and step behind me, um, but um, hello, Coco. But uh, yes, we've got lots of stuff going on, um, and we have uh, announced. Those of you who are on our mailing list will know that on Saturday we announced our regular big sew sessions. So we tried it out with all of you back in, for Christmas, and that was uh, a real success, and we did Christmas decorations. But we know that a lot of you enjoyed it and wanted to, it to keep happening, and so what we've decided to do is to do a regular big sew on a Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 7.30 UK time. And it will be different from a sew along in that it will be through Zoom so that we can all see each other. And we'll be able to go into breakout rooms and chat and show each other what we're wearing. And I'll also do some chatting to a few of you so that you know we can all kind of talk together and try and run it like I did last time. And there'll be a theme to each week. So it's not gonna be like incredibly complicated. It's gonna be lovely, easy, hand sewing generally um, sort of things um, that we'll be doing. Um, so uh, we're going to be doing mindful embroidery on wet the first Wednesday, which is Wednesday the 20th. So it will be really minimal uh, things that you need, probably an embroidery um, ring and fabric and thread each week. And we'll be doing different things. Um, and the main thing is that we all just come together for an hour once a week do some really soothing sewing, because sewing really does soothe the soul, and um, enjoy each other's company, and have an opportunity to get dressed up if we want to. So for those of you that have got a dress that you handmade and you've been dying to wear it, but it hasn't felt like it's been the right time, well, you could wear it for the big sew. So we'll be doing that every Wednesday evening. A link to it will be going up if it hasn't gone up. Sorry if I've missed it. Um, but uh, you can buy a ticket for it. It's just five pounds. We wanted to make it affordable for all. So five pounds um, and uh, yeah, 
we'll be doing uh, some nice sewing together and beginners are welcome because it's going to be super simple hand sewing sort of things. On top of that though we'll be continuing with our sew alongs so our sew alongs will be re reg regular <laughs> regularly um, on uh, once a week. Now we have advertised and we've had a bit of a a tweak around because we've done the big sew and so for my energy levels we are going to be doing uh, the sew alongs on Mondays instead of Wednesdays because we'll do the big sew on a Wednesday evening so they have changed so I think next week is the last week that I'll still be doing the sew along it's a double whammy because it's a new pattern so it'll be Wednesday and Thursday next week um, for the new pattern sew along so that'll be normal and then from the week after it will be moving on to Monday lunch times now given that I've said that on top of that dealing with things changing all the time if Jasmine's nursery closes uh, which may happen um, then we'll probably look at moving it to another day when I don't have Jazzy because I usually look after Jazzy's Monday Tuesdays and Wednesdays up till lunchtime and then Matt takes it for the second half of the week um, so I wouldn't be able to do a sew along <laughs> As you know, we have tried, um, but I wouldn't be able to do a sew along uh, whilst she's in the house. Even with uh, my support, support bubble, which is James, even with him helping out, it's still going to mean she'll keep coming and interrupting us. So, And unfortunately, she doesn't have a nap anymore. When we started doing these sew alongs, it worked perfectly because Jazzy would have her nap whilst we were doing them, wouldn't she? And very occasionally, she'd wake up and come and say she needed a wee. <laughs> in the middle of the live so along um but anyway that's how it is so we'll keep you updated guys but i'm sure you'll understand that it's a constant moving feast for all of us at the moment and we'll just try and do the best that we can so today though we are doing a pipe cushion and i've actually called this video pipe cushion part one because i was prepping for it last night and i realized it's just so much to do so in one session and I really don't want to rush this because it's not like we've got instructions for it somewhere else we probably will eventually make this into a product because it'd be a nice thing to have um, as a pattern that you could get with instructions but for now it's we don't have that so I wanted to be able to do it properly with you guys so today we'll just make the piping and talk about how we do that and then we'll schedule in for another session so pipe cushion number two which will be in a few weeks time because we've already scheduled the rest and then we'll do we'll finish it off in that one so um, then there'll at least be a complete set of pipe cushions um, so if you're watching this uh, um, after the live then just so you know there will be another part to it um, in a few weeks time and that will all go up um, on the channel loads of chatting going on guys it's so lovely to see um, seeing you all saying hi to each other hi to me thank you for all of you who have um, so mm, um, and uh, let's get started so I'm gonna make a 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter cushion now uh, you need to know what size cushion you're going to make because that will determine how much binding you will need. Uh, so the binding, binding, sorry, piping, <laughs> looks like binding to me, dressmaker, dressmaker. The piping that you will need um, needs to be four times the size of the cushion. So if you think about a square cushion cover, which is what we're making, sorry, I'm getting a bit booby there tighten this up a square cushion um, will have four sides of 50 centimeters okay so we need to times but it's not just if you make it if it's for a cushion pad that is 50 centimeters we need to add seam allowance to that so I would normally add a seam allowance to each edge of a centimeter three eighths of an inch for those of you who are doing imperial and that would give us 52 centimeters so the cut fabric will be 52 centimeters by 52 centimeters so that would be 208, quick maths, 208 centimetres. So that is the length of piping that I need. But I'm going to add an, an extra uh, bit to that because we need to be able to overlap. We need to be able to join it because you're not going to be able to cut one continuous piece that's two metres, um, two metres and, and eight centimetres long. So I'm going to say that I'm aiming for um, a length that is around 2 uh, metres, 20 centimetres. So I've got a bit of extra there. You could even go 2 metres, 30 centimetres. Essentially, though, you'll probably need to do three strips. 
So if you're cutting bias, uh, what you need to do, and I did think about trying to do this with you, but given that I'm filming this on a phone and I've got limited space, it would be really hard to, to do it with you. So I thought I'll just talk you through how I did it. And those of you who have dressed made, made, made clothes, <laughs> made bias binding before, you will know how to do this. It's exactly the same. So what you need to do is you get your fabric and you lay it flat on the table with the right side doesn't actually matter right side up or right side down, probably right side down because then you can draw on the back. Um, and then you want to make sure that it's crease free so it's completely flat on the table. And then you'll need either a set square or a pattern master. My pattern master is like properly wonky. I had it in the back of my car, I think something heavy sat on it. Um, as in, not a, that makes it sound like a person. I haven't been carrying a person bound in the back of my car in the boot. Um, I think I had a, some sort of box or something on it. Anyway, on the pattern master, there is a 45 degree angle. So what you can do is you put the 45 degree angle on the selvage, so that's the finished edge of the fabric, and therefore it will angle this, the ruler edge, at 45 degrees, which is what it needs to be in order to cut your bias strips. So bias strips are 40, cut 45 degrees from the selvage and they hit the bias of the fabric, which is the 45 degree angle. And it actually is quite stretchy. So I've already cut mine. You can see that when you pull it, it does stretch. So you want to draw some strips now for a four millimeter piping, and obviously you can get piping narrower than this, but this is pretty standard for cushions and soft furnishings. So for that, you'll need to cut four centimeter width strips. So my strips that I've got here are four centimeters wide, and I've got three of them, okay? So I've actually made it a bit longer than what I've got, but I'm going to join it together and then I can always trim it down. So um, I'm going to have a sip of tea, feeling like I'm starting to get tickly. Mm. So what we need to do before we can make our piping is we need to um, uh, join our bias binding into one big strip so that when we join hi sal when we join our pipe we use our piping cord um we have just got one continuous bit that's very unarticulate sorry about that hi tina um so when we come to join bias binding we need to make sure and i want to try and do this so that you can see if i push him eh, up the way there so we're going to join them we're going to keep one strip like that coming down towards me and one strip going across. That's the wrong side. I need to cut the angles. Sorry, I need to recut these angles that way. I know I've cut these angles were there already, but you might, you need to be able to take, so if you think that right side and that right side, they're both facing up towards the, the, the point is at the top there on the same side. So then when you come to put them together, they'll create a right angle. So you keep one for right sides up and then you take the other and place that right sides down. And that strip, so we've got that coming down and that strip going across like that. Now what we want to do is make sure that where these little bits that tick um, point out, so there's little kind of triangly bits, that they're even on both sides. So you've not got it kind of, um, you've not got it sort of completely off like that. Um, but m also what you don't want to do is line it up perfectly. And this is one of the most common mistakes when joining bias binding, is that people put the point there to the edge there and the point there to the edge there. But when you stitch that and then you turn it round, look what happens. You get a kind of completely misaligned so that's why you have to have a little triangle poking over. They need to overlap and then go beyond a bit more. So you want to have ideally about a centimetre sticking out because that's the seam allowance we're going to use. So I'm just going to, what helps is if you put the pin in, like really put your pin in and then you can open it out and see. And you can see, right, well actually that's going to join up and it's going to be a smooth 
lined up edge there and there on either side of the binding. I hope that makes sense. Rosie, on our stitch school, I'm pretty sure we've got this, but if we haven't, we need to do it. But on our stitch school, is there um, a tutorial on how to do this? Because it's quite hard for me to do the um, show this without having like a nice overhead camera. Let's see what Rosie says. Well, Rosie's pretty sure about it. She's getting the link. Okay, so. Um, and if there isn't one, we'll be doing one soon. Whilst actually I'm talking about Stitch School, Rosie and I are able to keep filming Stitch School. So obviously this is a really tricky thing at the moment, trying to work out how we can do this. But Rosie and I feel that we can do it easily if it's just me and her filming for Stitch School because we can keep social distance and we've now got our new snazzy offices which are much safer for people to work in because there's a lot more space. So Rosie and I will be uh, heading, um, in, trying to film something weekly um, and getting lots of lovely new things up on Stitch School for you guys. So those of you that are members, keep an eye out. More is coming. Anyway, back to this. So that is how it looks, okay? And we are gonna stitch from that V, if you think about that point there, that's a V in there. So from that V to that V, which should be a centimeter seam allowance. And you'll notice that I've got a different machine today and that's because this is one of the old machines that we had at work and that we used to use in the classes and we have piped feet for them and I don't have a piped uh, foot for my um, my Benina, so I thought well, rather than spending money on a Benina foot, those of you who have a Benina will know that they're not cheap, the press of feet for Beninas, um, you might as well just use this one. So make sure you do a really good reverse at the start, and the same at the end, I'm making sure the reverse is happening over the two layers of fabric, okay? And then we will press that open and trim those, but then you can see nice and neat. So we now need to do another one, add another one on there. I should have said that the fabric that I'm using, guys, is the Lisa Comfort Home Monochrome Spot. Um, so I am really feeling, this has been so popular, this fabric. If we have Rosie, maybe if she hasn't already, maybe Rosie, I feel like I'm asking Rosie a lot today. Sorry, Rosie. <laughs> if we can put the um, link to that up on um up on here for people so we have actually we're, we're running low but we've still got some left um and we'll be hopefully reordering um another print run of it soon so again just check overlapping those right sides together and then checking that's not quite right so it's not lining up properly so i'm just going to adjust that a bit further move it over a bit better okay so again going from the V to the point where they overlap the V and then oh we don't so what do we have we don't have an te exact technique but we do have one joining the bias binding I couldn't read all of that Let's see if I can get it back we don't have one okay but you've used it on a garment which will help. We'll add one in, we'll add it to our list. Oh, wonderful, well done, Rosie. I'm now gonna, that's gonna fade away, wonderful. Sorry guys, you've got a really big close up on my hand there. Hi, <laughs> scary hand coming at you. Um, well, we'll, we'll do that then. We can add that to our list. Oh, hi Coco, sound of the sewing machine, Coco's back. So I've joined my three strips now there. I'm going to cut off these ends and then we're going to press those open and then we're going to start to make our piping. Is that okay, Coco? <laughs> Hello, darling. Can you please move away? Move away. Off you get. The sewing machine's going down now. The iron's coming up and there's definitely no room for you with the iron. Go away. <laughs> Coco, 
go seriously off, off darling, off, off, off. She's got so tame about the solos now, hasn't she? She's like, yeah, whatever. This is my house too. <laughs> Yes, yeah, sorry guys, those of you who joined late, I'm wearing the Heidi dress. We did get a link up for it earlier. Did I say it was the Heather dress? Did I get that confused? Heidi, not Heather. Okay, so we are going to press these open now. So where we've done these little joins, Coco, not that. She's trying to know. Coco. Um... Press those open. And then we're going to just cut these off. So these are the little triangle bits that were overlapping. We can just trim those. Okay, lovely. Well, that's it done. Right, puffing time. So now start to put the piping in the bias binding so I need to measure this though because I really do not want to make too big a piping so let's see so we're going to oh thank you Sal um, so what did I what 208 centimeters no I said 220 didn't I 220 220 what have I let go? I've let go of the wrong thing. <laughs> um, okay. There. So keep it on going. There. Fab. Trimming him off. I put him around my head. I'm getting a lot of this. Is, there's a lot of no. I knew you would be back because there's a lot of snake like things. Go on, off, off. Right, so now I'm going to take the strip and we are going to encase it, the piping, with this. So we want to sit the piping in the middle of the bias strip and then we're going to wrap that over. Okay, and then we're going to pin oops, parallel, so the pin's going up. So you have to just sort of do this in little sections. So you've got your bit here, you keep your piping over to as far over to the left, and then quite snugly get those pins in so they're not catching the piping cord, but they're really holding it in position. And then you've also got to make sure that the two edges of your bias binding are sitting next on top of each other. So they're encasing it, the pins holding it in place and the edges are aligned. So a few things to think about as you're doing this. But this is going to take me a while guys, so we can have a chat see. So I think I saw, I can't remember who said it was, so sorry. Um, but I think I saw um, that we had somebody making a head done what is uh, what else is on people's sewing tables let's find out i made the newest pattern that i don't know if the pdf no we're not allowed to go pdf club it's not the pdf club vip club um i don't know if the vip club have found out but i made that last night late last night so that i could film a video about it today nothing like last minute <laughs> Yes, the email has come through. Oh, Ultimate Pyjamas, another Audrey top. Oh, and the VIP club has gone out into the world. Woohoo! A Kate dress. Oh, lovely. Oh, a Kate dress. I haven't made one of those in ages. Oh, Tina, you've lost your sojo. Well, that is absolutely understandable at the moment. I feel like lots of people will be feeling like that. Just finished your Meredith dress. Oh, I'm pleased, Lorianna, and I hope you got that sleeve sorted too, because I realised there was an issue there. Um, oh, yay. 
And you're making the Ava skirt. Oh, I've got that on my list as well, June, to make one of those. Another Heather dress for Fal. That makes sense. They're wonderful, aren't they? Oh, really, you need a really pretty nighty pattern. That's a nice idea, actually, yeah. I'd like that too. Mm -hmm. um, oh, someone else is revamping their living room with Lisa Comfort Home. Oh, you're a bit hebbed and out. Oh no, Fiona, have you been making too many? Oh dear, what's good for a beginner? Well, for a beginner, uh, Ava skirt's a good one. Um, it's, a skirt's always good because you don't have to worry about fitting around the bust area. Or a very, very simple uh, jersey top. Molly top, beady top. Lorianne's made, oh, you're gonna make an, you've made five, Fiona. <laughs> That's insane, I bet you are. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, someone's making some of your quilt. Do you know what? I really want to get into a quilt. I think I'd like to do hand quilting though. And I thought maybe we could do that on one of our big sews. So I did used to do a bit of that. So there was a, I don't know if you've heard of the brand Kath Kidston. Those of you in the UK will have. But I used to be their kind of craft um, consultant for live events that they did throughout their shops in the UK. Mm. And she bought out a book, which I've now lost, which is annoying, but it was all Kath Kidston, uh, patchwork um, or something like that and there was a really lovely um, patchwork kind of hand patchwork kind of pattern um, oh Rosie I didn't know that I think isn't it therapeutic though and I remember actually randomly I remember Matt's mum showing me once a quilt that she had handmade it was enormous she hadn't finished it she'd just done the patchwork and she basically, it was hexagons, and she used the little shapes and then hand sewed them together. And she did it when she moved to London. She was really homesick and miserable for the first few months, which is often what happens when you move to London. It's a hard city to get to grips with initially. And uh, yeah, it was insane. Anyway, I thought that would be a really lovely, mindful thing to be doing at the moment. I've also still got that crocheting quilt that I bought, um, blanket for Jazzy, but... I don't know if I really feel into that, but I thought it'd be, I'm one of those people that likes to be busy whilst watching television, but sewing on a machine, it's too hard, isn't it? You don't really take in then, and it's not the same sort of relaxation. And uh, otherwise, I just look at my phone, and before I know it, I've opened the news app, and you know, that's not a good thing to be trying to relax with, or I've, I've decided to check on a work email or something, so yeah. The piping is four, um, is four mil piping. I bought it, we got it just, I think we got it from Amazon. It's just a pack of piping. You can get it from haberdashery shops. Um, but four mil piping, it's piping cord. And you pretty much can get it anywhere. And then we made our strips four centimeters wide. And then we had to take whatever measurement our cushion will be. We then took that and we um, times it by four, including the seam allowances for the cushion. And uh, yeah, that's where we, and then we joined them together. That's where we're at. But yes, so I think a bit of quilting, and I know over in the US, quilting is a massive thing. How many of you who are joining us from the US also quilt? Or even, <laughs> you don't have to be in the US. How many of you quilt? <laughs> I missed some questions up there, guys, so sorry. Rosie is there quilting since 1994, Tracy. Ah, you're from Canada, Cheryl, and you also quilt. Yeah, you don't have to be in, in the US to quilt. There's just that, um, there's a tradition there, isn't there? Please, Coco, just go away. Off, off, off. Very annoying. <laughs> oh, oh, Sylvia's got fluffy snowing. Oh, do you? That's amazing, Lorianne. That sounds fascinating. Wow. English paper piecing, that's it. Yes, that's what it's called. Oh. Yeah, I think it's a time thing for me, quilting. I just don't have the time, but, well, although I'm a, a busy person, I do have the time in the evenings and it would make it a little bit more interesting. 
No one needs to be following me, guys. I think, yeah, that just you don't need, you can join for the chat. One thing you can be sure of in these sew-alongs is I will waffle along whilst I sew. Or in this interest, in, po in this point, whilst I pin. Coco is now trying to get up the back of the armchair. She has, she can, eat, she can go outside. She doesn't want to go outside and play because it's cold. She wants to play in here, which is very annoying. <laughs> Project Linus. Oh, what's Project Linus? Well, now I wish I could stop doing this and just chat, guys. Oh, that's great. I'm glad so many of you are quilters. I'll have to, um, yeah. I want to have to watch a few videos about it. Mm. We're almost at the end, guys. We're getting there. We are getting there. Okay. So... Isn't it amazing? Currently there are 140 of us watching this, joining in, um, all over the world, from all over the world. Just from seeing some of the regular names, I know there's people from the US, there's people from Australia, there's people from Denmark, France, Canada. It's wonderful. Can you use a zipper foot instead? Well, it's... You can if it's a single arm foot, but it's definitely harder. I'll show you, I'm gonna get the pipe. We're actually gonna do sew this together now. I'm gonna get the piping foot in a second. Um, okay, okay. There we go, so I made it a bit longer on the bias, but anyway. So here's my piping foot, this is for a Janome. And you. and you can see the channels are so big. I'm going to read up about the Linus project because I think it looks wonderful, guys. Sorry that I can't read that now. Um, but yeah, the channels of a piping foot are really big to so that the piping cord can really nestle in there. So you can see, here's the foot and there's the piping cord and that just sits like that in there. So... Um, and obviously it can go on either side as well. There's two sides. Oh no, I've now dropped it. Right, I'm gonna get the sewing machine back up on the table, find that foot, and we're gonna sew this binding um, piping together. Oh, blah. <laughs> Bear with, I'm gonna show forage on the floor for that. So we're going to put this on. Okay, so what you do is you move your needle with this foot is you drop it down onto the piping and you move your needle so you can get nice and close. Now what you mustn't do is get too close so that you're stitching on the piping cord itself because when we get this sandwiched in between our cushion cover pieces, are you serious Coco? It, we don't want the stitching to show from where we've created the piping. So it's important that it's close to the piping, but it doesn't need to be absolutely. So unfortunately you can't really see um, what I'm doing, um, but I have going to, for me, it's actually better if I move, I'm gonna move that needle over just by, um, oops, no, that's the stitch length. Come on, Lisa. <laughs> Couple of points, yeah. So I'm stitching off the piping, um, but I'm stitching probably about a millimetre just from the edge of where the piping is. So nestling really close. And this piping foot makes it so easy to do that. It's a bit like using a concealed zip footer. I think Coco and I are like a couple that have been in lockdown together too long. We've got cabin fever invading each other's spaces. <laughs> 
get going wrong. She normally is really brightens my day, but today she's been naughty and she keeps going at these. These are our gorgeous dry flowers that we sell on Lisa Comfort Home, and I've just replenished, got myself a new one, and she I literally keep catching her, getting them, and then carrying them around the house and damaging them. Because she's not in my best books today. Okay, so away we go. And I've made, I've used a light grey as a thread colour for this because I want to be able to show you it. But you can see I'm, I'm sort of helping keep it steady, but pretty much the foot is keeping it in its position. Those grooves there are really great. They're holding it in. You can watch Coco, but don't touch. Whilst I'm sewing this, guys, I can talk to you a bit about other things that are coming. Um, so this year, we will, as you know, those of you in the VIP club, know we're, we've got a pattern just out and we'll be bringing out a pattern every month. Um, we're also, um, oh my goodness, she's eating the end of it now. Oh well. Fill your boots, Coco. Um, and, but we are also on Instagram. I am going to be doing some little mini lunchtime sew sessions so not like this because they won't be live but they'll just be like little projects that you could make around the home or it could be little projects that you could so sewing projects or little sewing projects for clothes very simple things and i'm also sharing a lot more about what i'm wearing each day trying to keep uh, some inspiration on there and what we can wear that isn't just leggings and jeans and a jumper because i am sick of wearing not wearing dresses, but a lot of the dresses that I have aren't suitable. So what I'm doing is I'm having a look at those dresses and I'm mixing it up um, and seeing if I can kind of get them to a more kind of dress down look. Also, I'm gonna be sharing that with you, but I'm also doing some makes. So I did a little hack of our Edie with our Georgie. And I've got a couple of others I want to do as well. Um, our most recent release is very um, suitable to what I'm trying to do at the moment and sort of find a comfortable way to dress but also make me feel nice. Um, oh, thank you, Lorianne. Yeah, the VIP club is a bit different from um, the PDF club. It's a little bit more special. Ow! But it's the same concept. So if you like the PDF club last year, you'll definitely like the VIP club. You guys just get a little bit more... Um, than you do. You get, a, you get told a bit more, um, you get a few more discounts. Um, but yeah, we felt like you guys who joined it were our VIPs, so we wanted to rename it. We're also, another thing that um, we're doing is we are extending the fabric that we're selling. So, um, um, I'm in the process of ordering lots more new lovely fabrics and we're extending our fabric collection. We're not planning to go back to where we were, which having quite an extensive range of lots of colours of lots of different fabrics, but we are planning on at least more than doubling what we currently have. So uh, keep your eyes on our site, keep your eyes on our, our mailing list and also um, on our uh, Instagram and Facebook because we'll be putting them up on there. Um, and I'll try and use as many things as possible to, for the makes that I'm doing so that you can see the fabrics made up because I always think that's really nice. Um... Oh, Helen, I'm glad you've got it already. Yeah. It's a nice, nice pattern for this time of year. I need to stop talking about it though, because you know what I'm like. I'll, I'll, I'll let the cat out the bag. Those of you that are new and not, not sure what we're talking about, the VIP club finds out about the newest releases a week before, but we're not allowed to say anything about it. So there is a secret Facebook group that um, the VIP clubs can talk freely about the new pattern on there, but. In spaces like this, we're not allowed to talk about it. Uh, 
Okay, I'm getting to the end, guys. Woohoo! Oh, hi, Marilyn. Hi. Right. Oh, ouch. We're done. Piping created. So this is what piping looks like if you've never seen it, because you may have seen it only in a cushion or so, or on a garment or something encased, and so you don't see this part of it. But that is piping, and you can see how close I've gone with my stitching. It's not, I can pinch still a, a bit more, so it could be a little bit, um, yeah, it could be a little bit uh, closer, but I don't want it to make it closer, because when we stitch it with the cushion, we need it to be about there. So that's the, the point that I wanted to get to for today. Um, and in honour of me always trying on the makes, there we go, you could fashion it into a really warm scarf. Um, I saw somebody said just then, when you show us your makes, can you show shoes? Yes, I will try and do that. Sometimes my shoes are downstairs, but if I can, I will. Um, and, oh, thank you. How many set in this? There's about three small bouquets in that. There's a lot in there. But you, I mean, I just grabbed them so you could. I think there's there was more. There was about another little bunch here, but Coco's taken this. So yeah, a bit less than that. Um, lost my train of thought. Sorry. Yes. Also, somebody also asked if we can start talking about the model sizes that we use so that you guys have a gauge of what size they are and therefore can compare to yourselves and what size you would be making. So we do want to do that. Um, it's obviously quite a big job because we've got to go back and do that. But at least from now on, I'm going to try and talk more openly or regularly rather about what size I am at the point that I'm recording whatever I'm recording so that you can see oh okay well she's got similar measurements to me then so maybe I should make that size as well because I think it's really helpful isn't it for reference and even when you're buying on you know clothes stores or whatever you can now see online what the model you know it says model wears so we're going to try and do a bit more of that to help you guys make um, um, the decision on what size to make right I do not it's really nice chatting here to you guys I don't really want to go I haven't got anything more sewing to do. Um, Rosie, how's the new office going? Rosie's in the new office, guys, today. Let's see how that's going. Um, or I believe she is. She might not have been gone there yet, but she's planning on, I think. We had heavy lifting day. The new office is great. Oh, I love it there. It's so lovely. So it's in one of those shared workspaces, which is actually what we were in before. But where we were before was very near where I used to live and I sorted that out because of Jasmine was a baby and that's why I wanted to have somewhere I could walk to. But it was quite an expensive part of Hackney and now, height as well, okay, we'll pop that into. Um, and now, so what we've done is we've gone into Bow, which is a less expensive part of Hackney or East London really, it's not Hackney, Bow is different from Hackney. So it's cheaper, but it means that we can get a bigger space and a space with a view. Those of you that have seen us on Instagram, it is lovely. And the online shop is back up and running again. Wow. Yes, sorry, guys. So we had two days where it's down um, because we had to be moving. Um, and all fabrics will be going out again from um, uh, from the, this um, from today. So... Uh, our wonderful Sojo is working on getting them out. But yeah, it looks like, so when I left yesterday, it looked like it was an office already. Um, so it's going to be a reduced team there still. It will only really be uh, Sojo and one of the others who, um, Alex, who do, does our e-commerce um, orders and Rosie and myself there. But, and we kind of stagger when we're there. So we're not really there all at the same time necessarily but it is such a lovely space to be in and uh, it means that we can run our company a lot more easily. Because behind the scenes, when we were in a very restricted space um, in the old shop, it just wasn't practical. So um, it means now we can, we're gonna have set up um, an area for Stitch School all the time so we can just dip in and out and film stuff more easily which is really exciting. Um, and then we can see all the fabric. We've got these amazing warehouse shelves so we can see all the fabric. So for me, organizing the fabric, I can see what we've got in, what's doing well just by looking at it. Um, and yeah, we've got all our patterns organized. It's just, yeah, it's so much better. So yeah, it's very exciting, very exciting for us. Hello in Singapore. 
Right guys, how I probably should go, I'd love just to stay here and chat to you, but I have to film lots more things. So today is a day of filming, so I've got to film lots more things that are gonna be going up on IGTV or other things on YouTube. Um, and yeah, I need to get on with that. So thank you for joining me. Thank you to Rosie for answering your questions. Thank you guys for participating and chatting um, and just watching it. Um, and I will be back next week on Wednesday and Thursday for the Sew Along for the Newest Pattern. And yeah, I'll also see some of you, I hope, on Wednesday next week for the Big Sew. But we'll see each other first on the Sew Along before then. But anyway, we'll be talking a lot more this week on social about the Big Sew. So we'll see you then. Bye, guys. Have a lovely week. Take care.